Hello my darlings, I hope you're all doing very very well, I hope you are sitting comfortably, you are cosy and you have your snacks and your beverages at the ready. In today's video it is quite a heartbreaking one and I'm honestly, I'm just so sad at this story and I truly couldn't believe what I was reading when I was reading it. And yeah, this video is quite a lot and it's quite heavy so if this is the type of content that you're not really into, I completely understand and I can always catch you in my next video but I really wanted to highlight this because it's just terrifying that this type of thing still happens in this day and age, you know? So this is the story of a man who was killed because of his tattoos. So I was sent a link to a news article by Josh. Josh is a long time viewer. He's also a moderator of my Facebook group and um, he's an all round uh, good guy. But he sent me a link to this news article and was just like, you know, nothing is safe anymore. And the title of this news article was Wisconsin man punched over tattoos dies. Kevin Seema sentenced. And um, this news article, there wasn't much information. And to be honest, any news article I come across, there wasn't too much information. There was bits missing here and there. And some stuff just wasn't making sense. It was very, you know, jump to the ending of the story or, you know, or little tidbits here and there, but there was never a full storyline. Um, so I basically spent I don't know how many hours, a few hours, I want to say three, four hours, maybe even longer than that. I think it was like five. I don't, anyway, it doesn't matter. I spent a lot of time watching court videos about this because I wanted to get a full story to see what actually happened. You know, was the title of this news article and many other news articles correct? Because I was just like, there's just no way, <laughs> you know, like, I know people are um, attacked because of what they look like a lot, but tattoos? In, in, in 2024, you know? And um, sadly, it is, it's the case. After watching all the court footage, um, it is, it's the case. This all started because of tattoos, because a man had tattoos and another man didn't like the tattoos or just doesn't like tattoos in general. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the whole situation. Um, so let me introduce you to the people that are involved in this. We have the attacker or aggressor. His name is Kevin Seymour. He is now 65 years old, but when this attack happened, he was 64. I honestly couldn't find too much information about him. And honestly, I, I don't particularly care enough about him to, um, you know, really dig because I just don't think he deserves to have a backstory as such, you know? But from what I could find out about him, he was a little league coach for around about five years. He went to the University of Wisconsin as well, and he studied general business administration and management. He's also worked for the same company for many, many, many years. Kevin, surprise, surprise, does have a criminal history as well. The first incident was in 2015, where Kevin allegedly confronted someone that was doing gardening work on a neighbor's property. His wife confronted this person first because they, I think they were going over property lines or something like that. And obviously something wasn't resolved. So Kevin went out there to, you know, yell at him. Basically, that's basically what he did. Kevin yelled at him and got right up into this worker's face. And this is where Kevin chest bumped him and said, I'm going to put you in a hole. And then there was another incident in 2022 when Kevin was at a car wash. And this is where Kevin allegedly picked up a vacuum and was like waving it in a worker's face, complaining at the fact that it wasn't working and nothing around here works. This is where Kevin was getting even more hostile and was yelling. Kevin was waving his fists in front of this worker's face and saying that I will send you into next week. He was cited disorderly conduct for that incident. As we can tell, Kevin does have a bit of a temper on him and can, you know, go zero to a hundred very, very quickly for whatever reason. And now we're gonna talk about the victim who sadly lost their life because of Kevin. The victim's name is Josh Davies, who was 39 years old. He was a landscaper from Wisconsin and he really liked to play disc golf. He was married to Jennifer Davies and together they have three children. He had two loving parents who miss him dearly, of course. And he also had a sister named Jamie who described him as the life of the party and someone that always had 
her bag. So let's talk about this horrific and heartbreaking incident. This all took place on Saturday the 17th of June 2023. Josh was on a night out with his wife Jennifer and friend Brian. They went out to a restaurant and after they went to a bar, you know, just having a good time as you do with your, your other half and your friend. They went to a concert for a couple of hours and this is where they met their friend Laura. Laura has been a client of Jennifer's for a long time. Jennifer is a hairdresser and they have obviously become friends over time so they met up because they were both going to this concert. At the concert before meeting Jennifer and Josh, Laura was walking around and she come across Kevin. Laura and Kevin have never met before but they just started you know to get talking. They pretty much instantly had a friendly banter between them. Laura was making some light jokes about the fact that Kevin was drinking a cocktail. The drink that Kevin was drinking at the time Laura described as a pink girly drink. I think she said she thought it was something like a sea breeze, um, something like a vodka and cranberry. It had like a pink tone to it. So she was kind of making jokes about the fact that he was drinking a pink girly drink or what have you. And it was all lighthearted. There was no offense taken or anything like that. He seemed to be in very, very good spirits at the time. The conversation then led to the fact that Laura is currently single and Kevin had a recently divorced friend named Tom. And Kevin was like, you have to meet Tom. You know, he's recently divorced. You're single. We could make this work type thing. Anyway, Kevin and Laura just ended up talking for around about 15 to 20 ish minutes. Kevin then gave Laura his phone number just so they can talk again and they can arrange meeting with this friend Tom. After all of this happened, Laura then left Kevin and went on to find Josh and Jennifer. After the concert, the four of them decided to go to a local wine bar called Tabby's Wine Bar. When they walked into Tabby's Wine Bar, Laura noticed that Kevin was there and decided to, you know, wave him over and be like, hey, how are you doing? Because they had met earlier and thought it was okay to, you know, just go and talk to him because she had met him earlier. This is where Laura then introduced Kevin to Josh, Jennifer and Brian. They all got to talking and this is where things take a sour turn. Kevin's demeanour now a couple of hours into the night, now that he's had quite a few drinks, has changed from, you know, pleasant and friendly to pretty hostile. He went from joking around with Laura to not so nice. Laura said she noticed a big change in him. The conversation between the four of them led on to tattoos. Josh had quite a few tattoos, especially on his arms. On this night, Josh is wearing a vest, which you can see his tattoo collection on his arms. Josh's sister has said he has sleeves and designs that he designed himself. He had friends tattoo him, absolutely nothing that would be offensive to anyone. And it does look like his tattoos kind of look like tribal and just like a collection and just a collection of tattoos that he has collected over so many years. So with this information, knowing that his tattoos were not offensive in any means, it kind of makes you wonder why did Josh's tattoos aggravate Kevin so much? It just seems that Kevin is not a fan of tattoos no matter what whether they would be offensive or not. I mean, they weren't offensive, but no matter what, Kevin just does not like tattoos. And he made that very, very well known. He started to make pretty offensive religious comments by saying that Josh had marked God's work by having these tattoos. And there was also other people that said that they heard Kevin say stuff like, you are going to hell because of your tattoos. And other remarks like God wouldn't save him. And he just started acting very, very offensively. Brian, who is Josh's friend, said that Josh took this pretty lightly. He didn't take too much offense to it and kind of joked around with Kevin and even said, I actually want more tattoos, which didn't actually go down too well with Kevin. So Josh decided to defuse the situation by moving away from Kevin because Josh was quite close to Kevin. So he moved next to his wife to kind of get away from the situation and was kind of like, I don't want to speak to this man anymore, which is completely understandable. Kevin continued to talk to the four of them and he just wasn't being very nice whatsoever. Laura tried to defuse this situation as best as she could. She tried to get Kevin to leave and to go back to his friends because his friends were at the bar as well. But despite all of Laura's attempts, this just did not happen. Kevin was staying there and speaking to the four of them. Brian then said to try and defuse the situation it's best that him and Josh leave and go outside. So then maybe hopefully Kevin will get the hint and just leave everybody alone. This has all been captured on CCTV.
It was then said Josh poked his head through the door to get Jennifer's attention to say, you know, hey, come on, Jen, let's go. I don't want to be here anymore. Can we leave together type thing? And this then angered Kevin. However, there is CCTV showing the fact that Josh said, why are you talking to that fucking asshole? As in, why is Jennifer talking to Kevin? He's an asshole. Which, okay, maybe that wasn't needed considering that the situation has been diffused a little bit here and it has been de-escalated. But I too personally would have a bee in my bonnet if, you know, Tom was talking to someone that was saying I was going to go to hell because of my tattoo. So I would be kind of like that, to be honest with you. I'm not gonna lie. Either way, what Josh said does not warrant what happens next by any means. Kevin then went charging after Josh. Jennifer, who is five foot two, tried to get in the way between Kevin and Josh to make sure something didn't happen. But Kevin, with peace and love, he, he's a big guy. He is a big guy, height-wise, width-wise. I, it would take a fully grown big man to stop Kevin moving, not a five foot two woman. Laura also tried to stop Kevin as well by grabbing a hold of his shirt. Of course, this attempt didn't do much at all, which is very understandable. Jennifer said that Kevin continued to charge after Josh and it went out onto the patio of the wine bar. Jennifer then said that Josh picked up a stool to try and defend himself from Kevin, to try and stop him from charging any further, to stop him from attacking him because Kevin was in full charge aggressive mode. Josh decided to throw the stool at Kevin to try and deter him so he can get away, but that didn't do anything, sadly. And then this is where Kevin punched Josh full pelt in the side of his temple. This impact made Josh fall backwards and hit his head on the curb, and he hit his head incredibly hard. I'm sure you can just imagine the force of that impact. All of this happened with Jennifer standing right by Josh's side. I can't even imagine the fear and the hurt that Jennifer went through on that day. Like, if I witnessed Tom go through that, my boyfriend, I mean, I, I, I can't even think about it. I can't think about it. It'll literally make me cry. Like... Is a lot. Kevin has denied the fact that he punched Josh in the face, even though there was quite a few witnesses there. <sighs> Instead, he said that he violently pushed Josh just because he was angry and upset. He didn't punch him, he just pushed him. One of the witnesses was a musician by the name of John who was outside packing away their equipment, who said that he saw Kevin hit Josh. And of course, his wife was just standing right there next to him as well. You know, like, why? Why deny it if there's loads of witnesses? I don't know, I don't know, I just don't know. This violent act led to Josh having bleeding on his brain and skull fractures. He was rushed to hospital and there was many attempts of saving his life, but he sadly died just under a month after the incident. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a lot for his family to go through. Kevin left the scene, he just left and went home. He was caught the next day by police and arrested. Kevin pleaded not guilty of second degree reckless homicide on Friday the 15th of September in 2023. He was then charged with felony murder and aggravated battery. And then just under a year later on September the 6th, 2024, Kevin was sentenced to just seven years in prison. Just seven years for murder. <sighs> I just cannot believe he only got seven years for taking someone's life. Seven years, that's that's nothing. That's really nothing. Now Josh's kids do not have a father. He's never gonna see his children do all of the milestones that many people go through, graduate in high school, going to college, getting married, having kids. You've taken so much away from so many people and you only get seven years. There's only a few things in life that I have very strong beliefs about that you can never change my mind on. I'm very open to looking at other side of things for many different instances, but there's something about very low sentencing that just aggravates me to no end. A lot of people are like, well, you know, that's just what the court said. So, you know, he's gonna do his time and then he should be forgiven. Not on my watch. Seven years is not enough time. I fully believe that Kevin obviously didn't intend 
to murder Josh, but in my opinion, if you hit someone or are violent towards someone and they die because of it, or they are seriously hurt because of it, that is your responsibility. Your It was your actions that led to this happening. You should face the consequences of that. And to me, seven years is not it's not that much time if you think about it. Anyway, in court, Kevin said this that makes me even more angry. He said, I know everyone is searching for answers. I don't have any to bring peace. I don't know why I went outside. Something triggered it. That is a grown ass 65 year old man who cannot regulate his emotions. Kevin also issued another statement in court and he said in this statement, your honor, Josh's family and friends, please allow me to express my sincere remorse and sympathy for the loss of Josh, a son, a father, a husband and a friend. I also wanted to express my sorrow for my abhorrent behaviour that fateful night in the bar. It was a sincere low point in my life. I only hope Josh's family and friends can find it somewhere deep in their hearts to forgive me. I know I never will forgive myself. This statement was put on a Facebook um, page. I was looking through the comments and Quite a few people were like, okay, it seems like he's being sincere. It seems like he does actually have some remorse, but I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just not a very forgiving person, but this kind of thing would just, I don't know. I'm not obviously in anyone's shoes here at all. I, I don't want to claim to be, but I just, honestly, that statement, if I was in those shoes, if I was, you know, Josh's family, I would be enraged at that so enraged. While in court, Josh's mother said, you picked on the wrong guy. When you picked on Josh, he was one of the good guys. Josh's sister also said, Josh is gone forever. We deserve more time than what he's getting today. And Josh's father said, what he got was not nearly enough. I don't like the verdict at all. And Josh's wife said, I never imagined I'd be in a courtroom addressing the death of my husband. Josh was filled with laughter, love and kindness. And I want to highlight that so much. Like, this man, Kevin, took away someone so important to so many different people and that is heartbreaking. What I find absolutely absurd about all of this is the fact that Kevin was so horrible towards Josh because of his tattoos and saying that, you know, he's sinning, he's going to hell, he's marking God's work by having these tattoos. But then, you know, for such a religious guy, he decided to attack one of God's creations, you know? It just doesn't make sense to me. And then of course, with Kevin attacking Josh, that led to his death. I'm not a religious person whatsoever, but I have a feeling that, you know, the higher power, God, would be more upset at Kevin for attacking Josh for having tattoos than Josh having tattoos. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what? <sighs> now, of course, Kevin will now be spending seven years with a bunch of tattooed people. Because, of course, I always say tattoos are not just for criminals, but a lot of criminals do have tattoos. And um, I have a feeling the next few years for Kevin, it is, it's not going to be pretty. And um, I'm, I'm a big believer in karma. So I hope karma does deal with Kevin. <sighs> but yeah, this whole thing is so incredibly sad. And um, I guess this is just a warning to you out there. Should anyone ever be aggravated towards you because of your tattoos. I mean, Josh did everything that I would advise you to do. He walked away, he walked out. But yeah, th there's just people out there that can take it from zero to a hundred very, very quick. There's people out there that can just snap. I've seen it with my own eyes. I know people that can't handle their drink. They'll go from jolly, friendly, and they'll have that one extra drink that will tip them over the edge and they become monsters. You don't even recognize them anymore. You're just like, who? Who are you? What has happened? It's it's scary. It's like, a, honestly, I've seen it. I have a family member that's kind of like this. Um, there's just a, a switch that flips in them. And they don't even know themselves what their limit is because it changes day by day or what have you. And yeah, just be careful around people like Kevin. It's very obvious that he has some issues um, when it comes to anger maybe alcohol issues as well, or because of his anger issues, they don't mix very well with alcohol. I just feel incredibly bad for Josh's family. They have lost someone that obviously meant so much to so many, and I have nothing but love and sympathy for their family. Yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you all stay safe and well, and until my next video, bye.